Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to pick from multiple customer addresses for an order in Microsoft Access. Now, in previous videos, I showed you how to make it so each customer could have multiple addresses, but we really didn't do anything with that data. So in today's video, we're going to say how we can pick one of those addresses to ship an order to. And so we'll put it on the order form as well. Now, this is an expert level video, but I got a little star there. Why the star? Well, most of this, 99% of this, we can do just without any coding, but we will need one line of VBA code later to do something. Just one line, and I'll show you right where to put it. But aside from that, everything else is expert. Today's video is to help out one of my gold member students, Leem. Uh, he's trying to pick an address because because customers could have multiple addresses, right? And he wants to be able to pick the address for a specific order. And we've gone back and forth on the in the forums here and other students like Raymond and stuff and Kevin have tried to help him. And uh, it's, sometimes it's easier just for me to show how to do it in a video. Now, I mentioned to Leem, uh, I've got a video that's got, uh, it shows you how to store multiple addresses for a customer. So this is that video. It's a five part series. Go watch this before you start watching today's video, because I'm going to be using the database from this video for today's video. Okay. So go watch all five of these. If you haven't yet, there's a link. I'll put a link down below. You can click on now part five. The last one has a finished database and this is what I'm going to use. If you're not a gold member, then you're going to have to build this database yourself following along with these five videos. Okay. All right. Another benefit of being a gold member. So Liam, I know you're a gold member. Go ahead and download this guy. If you haven't already do it with my database first. So we're on the same page. Then once you see how it's done, then try to apply it to your database. Okay. All right. So here's the database download. I'm going to drag this up to my desktop. Yeah, I'm a little cluttered. I got a bunch of stuff on here. This is only one tiny piece of it. So, <laughs> all right, here's that database. We got the customer form. I scaled it down. I removed some stuff like uh, the order button we're going to have to put back today. But uh, here's where you can have the multiple addresses for a customer. There's me. There's James Kirk. I think those are only a couple ones. All right. So now the first thing we're going to need is a query so we can join together the customer with their address because when we get to our order form right i'm going to have the customer selection here then i'm going to have a cascading combo box below it where you can pick an address but you only want to see a list of addresses for this customer so we now have to take the address and bring in the customer id so we can show that in a combo box on here right so let's create a new query create query design and my query window is really big. Let's make that smaller. Okay, there we go. Sometimes when I do stuff off camera, because uh, my monitor is a lot bigger. So, um, okay, so bring in the address. That's all, all of our addresses in the database, right? Just as a little review, right? Here's all of the addresses for all of the customers, every address in the system. And then we have a many-to-many -many junction table, this guy that brings them together. Here's all the addresses by address ID. Here's the customer that owns that address. And then this, there's the address type, whether it's billing or shipping. And this is because you're going to have multiple customers that can be at the same address, right? You might have a, you know, a husband and wife, they each have their own customer record, but they share an address. And that's why we did it that way. Okay. So now we got to bring in the cross reference table there. That relationship ship relationship should get made. And now we got to bring in the address type T so we know what kind of an address it is. Now, the purpose of this guy is so that we can create a list of options in our combo box. So I'm going to build that accordingly. So let's start off by bringing in all the address information. And then we're going to bring in the customer ID because we need that so we can show just the addresses for this customer. Um, we're going to need the description, right? So we can see what we got. There it is. There's the address stuff right? There's the customer ID and then the description. And let's put this in a, in a, a way that's friendly to see in the combo box. Let's, let's make it like, cause you're going to have the customer up already and we want to show his addresses or her addresses. So let's show the, the city 
Now the address and the city, and then let's show the description, which will be like billing or shipping, right? So we can close this guy here. So I'm gonna zoom in on this box. So we're gonna make a, a, a calculated field here. And this is going to be, let's call it the full description. And this will be the address and uh, let's do comma space and the city and, and then a space and then inside parentheses, we'll put the description and close that up like this. Okay. All right. Hit okay. And let's see what that looks like now. And there it is. All right, so you got address and city, and that's the billing or shipping address. And you can see that, and we'll see this in the combo box on the order form. Now, if you wanna limit this to just a list of shipping addresses, you can do that here. Just do that in this query, right? Say where the address type ID has to be two or whatever, if you only wanna see shipping. But sometimes I know from my experience, you might only have one address for a customer. They might not have a separate billing and shipping address. So you might wanna be able to just pick from either one of them. That's up to you, or you can make it even more complicated and say, well, if they if they have a shipping address, show the shipping address. If not, then show the bill. So it's all up to you, but I'm just gonna show both of them for now. Let's save this. We'll call this the address with um, type Q. Okay. Close it. Now we're gonna make um, an order and we wanna be able to pick that, so we need to put the combo box on it. now. In the last series, in my brilliance, I uh, I deleted the order button because I figured we wouldn't need it. Well, now we got to add it back again. Now, here's the thing. The code's probably still in here. If I go to the code behind that form, and yes, the button's code is still in there. So all you have to do, because I, I deleted the buttons off the form, but I never deleted the code under it. That's one thing I don't like about Access. If you delete an object, it, all the code's still in here. But if I name a new button, order BTN, it, it should re just get that code again watch this uh i got a button right over here copy paste drag it down here and we'll make this guy order orders whatever and make it bigger so we can actually see what's in there and let's name it we'll call this order btn just like the last button was right and then i'll right click build event and then it gets that code back again Contact button, you're gone for good though. See ya. All right. Save it. Close it. Let's open up the orders. Okay, we're back where we were. Now, I want to put a combo box under here to pick an address for the order. But I'm picking that address from that query that we made, and we're going to limit it to see just this customer's orders. Now, we need a place to save that data. When I pick that address, I'm gonna, I need to save that information somewhere, right? I wanna save it in the order because every order could go to a different address. You might be ordering something for you know your home address or your, your office address or whatever. So we need a place to store the data. Where are we gonna store it? In the order table. All right, we're gonna add an address ID in here. That'll be a number of type long integer. It's a foreign key. And I like to keep all my IDs together up top. Okay, save it. Close it. Now, open it, open it. Let's go back into here. Let's make room for that combo box. Now I'll just slide this subform down. There we go. And we're gonna use the wizard to create an address combo box. Now let's start off by just getting an, a combo box that has all of the addresses in it, and then we'll add a where condition later to say I only wanna see the ones for just this customer. So let's go to form design, find me the combo box wizard. It's right there. Combo box wizard is a good wizard. I don't mind him. All right, we're gonna get the values from a table or query. We're using queries and it's the one we just made, that address with type queue. Okay, now what do we wanna see in the box? What do we need in the box? Well, we need an address ID because that's what we're actually storing in this field. And then for the visible field, all I need is the full description. So bring that over. Right, storing that field, showing that field. That's how combo boxes work, right? Next, sort it, doesn't matter. We're gonna sort it in our SQL statement, but that's fine. Next, all right, this is what it looks like. Remember, we don't get the little checkbox here because this is based on a query. So we have to take this guy and make its width zero and then make this as big as you need to make it so you can see everything that's in there. And maybe a little bit bigger. Remember, this is how big the box is when it's open, all right? 
All right, next. Now, which, which is gonna be the bound field, that's the address ID, and we're gonna store that in the address ID for the order, right? The order gets an address ID. Next, label, address, finish. There it is, little format painter action here. Slide that guy up under there. Slide that guy up under there. Over like this. All right, save it, close it, open it, and let's take a peek. Okay, it's working so far, but I'm seeing all of the addresses. So next I need to limit this list to just addresses for this customer. This customer back here, right? This guy. All right, how do we do that? Well, we'll talk about that in tomorrow's video. But before I forget, one last thing here. We're gonna open this guy's properties up. Before I forget, we're gonna name this address combo. It will come in handy later. All right, save that, close it, close it. And now I'll give you this slide. So tune in tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. Or if you're a member, you can watch it right now because I'm going to keep recording as soon as I'm done here. So Liam, you can keep watching with part two. One of the benefits of being a member at any level is you can watch videos as soon as I finish them, I post them. You don't have to wait for them to go public. But that is going to do it for your tech help video for today, folks. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.